Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, oh. You need to pray to get this working. <laughs> Don't worry, I can shout. <laughs> So the intentions for Mass this afternoon, for the needs of Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Mini Peñas Anton and Manuel Peñas on their birthdays, for all those recommended to our prayers, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And with this unusual time to have Sunday Mass, uh, we pray for safe journey tomorrow morning for Mother Lawrence. The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been called together to celebrate this fourth Sunday of Easter, a Good Shepherd Sunday, a day of prayer and longing for God's blessing on those called to be shepherds of the flock. We ask forgiveness for the sins of the church. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ. 
Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joy of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to the multitude, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are part of. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him, and testified with many other words, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, 
He revives my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. <coughs> Beloved, if when you do right and suffer for it, you take it patiently, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not heed them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and I will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 
It's a long time ago, but the ancient Near East was very familiar with this kind of language. The image of a ruler who was a shepherd to his subjects. And in the Bible, there's a very big theme, especially in the Old Testament, where there's endless examples of rulers who were bad shepherds and some good shepherds. But the dominant picture we have is Psalm 23, which we've just heard. And it is the, one of the most consoling texts in the whole Bible. Still, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Nothing. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters, he leads me to revive my drooping spirit, and so on. It envisages a person even walking in the valley of death. No evil shall they fear. Surely goodness and kindness will always be there. So that is the image that God himself approves of and has inspired. Because the Old Testament identifies God as the good shepherd, the one who always cares for his sheep. And the, drama the dramatic continuation of that in the New Testament is that Jesus himself identifies with God. He calls himself the Good Shepherd. And he does so in the teeth of a lot of bad shepherds. Because it seems that God allows this to happen. People can choose to be good or bad. The bad Shepherds in the Old Testament are just like the bad political leaders today. Self-serving, corrupt, unfaithful to themselves, to God, and to their subjects. In the new dispensation, there are still thieves and robbers and brigands, and the church has seen too much of this in its history, and particularly recently in our own church. Bad shepherds. And the overriding characteristic of the good shepherd of Jesus comes in the 10th verse of this 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full, have it abundantly. And therefore we need to ask, what is life to the full? What is life abundantly? Is it the kind of life led by the younger son who squanders his inheritance, breaks his father's heart? Is it like the thieves and robbers who live by corruption? Is it like the selfish people who put themselves first every time? Well, we know that life to the full is more than simply observing a moral law. It's observing a natural and supernatural law that we 
live for something greater than material gain, something greater than human success, something greater than popularity. We live for truth in love. We cannot flourish as a human being without truth or without love. And so it's our vocation to have life to the full, in other words, to live in God. God is our horizon. God is our goal. And so Jesus incarnates the word of God in the flesh and shows us how to live the truth intelligently and in love. And this chapter of John's Gospel and throughout the New Testament, we have a picture of the Good Shepherd, Jesus, laying down his life for his sheep. You don't do this for actual sheep. <laughs> Human life is more valuable. But this metaphor shows us that what the death of Jesus was about, he was giving himself for us in the forgiveness of sins. The Good Shepherd also knows his sheep and calls them by name. Just like you, if you have a pet, you give it a name and it gets used to that. And so each sheep had its own name in those days. And finally, the Good Shepherd works to unite all his sheep in one flock. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. So it's clear today, first that is most consoling and strengthening and helpful to discover God as our shepherd, the one who cares for us. Even if I should walk in the valley of darkness. We must pray today for good shepherds. That is, people right throughout the church, popes, bishops, priests, deacons, lay people, everybody, to hear his voice, to serve one another, to have life to the full, for that is human and divine vocation. We rest in this truth. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Let us stand to profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you reveal yourself to us as one who cares for us in every detail of our lives. Hear then our prayers made in this faith. For our parish community, that together we may live the gospel of the Good Shepherd in a spirit of peace and concern for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our bishops and priests, pastors and teachers, that they may lead the church to God through Christ the Sheep Gate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who govern and conduct the affairs of nations, that they may enact laws and public policies which uphold the sacred dignity of every person as a child of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who speak for the persecuted, and who suffer with the oppressed, that Christ, who gives his life for his sheep, may be their power and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the <coughs> suffering, the recovering, and the dying, that by Christ's sufferings they may be healed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, that they may dwell forever in the house of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love and Lord of life, hear our Easter prayers. Give us the vision of faith and the courage of hope to embrace the life of the risen Christ and have it to the full. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of your Son. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us, may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We your Lord, and profess your resurrection. <coughs> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with your Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Empowered by the Spirit, we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer one another a sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. That you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <clears throat> the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, Amen. defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, 
by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Oh, be more.